I'm sorry, again. So I've been on the quest to find the overall best IDE for programming. Now, other tech YouTubers have their most favorite IDEs for programming or their most preferred. So for example, like Ben Awad with the VS Code, side note Ben, love the channel. Or even the, the video that kicked this whole iteration off, Joma Tech with Microsoft Word. So with this quest, I saw that Joma Tech video about why Microsoft Word was the best IDE for programming, and that led me down to investigate actually why Microsoft Paint is the best IDE for programming. And later down the road, I actually had to correct myself and say that the YouTube comment section was actually the best IDE for programming. Well, I'm here again and to correct myself again and hopefully spread the good word to other tech YouTubers like Ben Awad and Joma Tech about why Windows Movie Maker is actually the best IDE for programming. Now this option was first suggested to me by the genius commenter Galactic Bacon. So first investigating this approach, I sadly found out that Windows Movie Maker is no longer available for download on Windows 10 but it is now baked into the Photos app, so I guess that's just gonna have to do. If you are curious on how the actual code works, stick to the end. Otherwise, let me show you why Windows Movie Maker is actually the best IDE for programming. So everyone knows that a key factor to being a good software engineer is not only, you know, writing good and logical code, but being able to explain that code. And think about it, which would you rather prefer? Trying to walk through someone else's code and, you know, their fonts really tiny, the colors don't really make too much sense, you don't really understand what you're looking at. It's just overall hard to look at or a sick presentation movie with awesome music in the background. Personally, I would choose option two any day of the week, but if you're still not convinced, let me give you a quick demo. So here is a movie with just a bunch of frames with various print statements. As you can see, the corresponding print messages are shown, but now for something a bit harder. So in the previous video, when I was doing the YouTube comments section IDE, I did copy and paste merge sort into there. So I feel like it's only fair to do that here. Now I'm gonna be honest here, the tabbing situation here is a, a little bit messed up. And since Python relies on correct spacing and formatting, uh, the OCR that I use and it not detecting formatting causes some slight problems. So in situations like this, you might have to go in and fix some of the tabs manually, but I think that is a bonus because it gives you a lot of practice in, you know, reviewing code and, uh, you know, reviewing pull requests and stuff like that. But here we go. So I put each line of merge sort in a frame in this video with some sick music, so enjoy. So how does this code actually work? As compared to the Microsoft Paint IDE video I did, I decided to try out Google's OCR Vision API instead of using Azure's Computer Vision. So basically what happens is, assuming you have a published video, I use OpenCV to extract a frame from that video every second. So each line of code in that merge sort you saw was one second long in the published video. OpenCV extracts the frame, and instead of saving it locally, I encode it, then add the associated bytes to a list, then once all of the frames have been extracted, I open a new Python file, write a try except around the actual code, then actually start calling the Google Vision API. For the API, you have to have a Google developer or console account, but it's really as simple as passing it the bytes of the image, which then creates a vision image, then passing that image to the client, and then sending a request to the API, which returns both the extracted text as well as the location of the text. Since we don't really care about the location, I just grabbed the actual text. I also noticed there was a weird like 3D random text getting returned as well as some extra new lines. So I just replaced those and then just write the corresponding text to the Python file we have open. Now, one of the main problems I ran into and is a problem in general optical character recognition is maintaining text format, specifically tabs, since Python relies on correct tab formatting and the OCR only returns extracted text. I couldn't really think of a way 
to actually programmatically determine where there needed to be a tab inserted because the interpretation could be ambiguous. For example, I thought of having like a tab counter that incremented every time the extracted text ended with a semicolon, and this would like sort of partially work, but it wouldn't know when to decrement that tab count. It's ambiguous because it's really hard to determine where a while loop is actually supposed to end because as opposed to other programming languages that use brackets, in Python, since it's all dependent on tabbing and blank spaces, you don't really know where those loops or those if statements are actually supposed to end besides, you know, human interpretation. I hope you guys like the latest installment of the best IDEs for programming series. I'm quite indecisive, so I'm sure I'm going to change my mind again at some point. And if you have any suggestions on you know, really innovative IDEs out there, feel free to leave them in the comments section down below. If you're looking for some minimalist programmer merch, consider checking out some of the clothes I've been designing at nullref.co. My name is Michael. We make college advice, career advice, tech, and computer science videos on this channel. If any of that sounds interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. We do Bob British accents at the end of every video. Check out one of my past videos and my past self would thank you dearly and check out one of my future videos and my future self would also thank you dearly. That's all from me. Hopefully I see you in another one. Bye-bye.